Hello and welcome to Industry Reactions. Industry Reactions is a weekly briefing on industry events, changes, and future trends that impact your business. We're your hosts, Rick Honer and Mark Friedel from Kempoint. You can find Industry Reactions on YouTube, LinkedIn, and as a podcast. For those watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and smash that like button. We plan on discussing issues that impact the global industry and help you uncover new opportunities. We also hope this will provide market intelligence that will keep you ahead of changing conditions. All right, Rick, now that we're in week two of the new year, uh, apparently an analyst at Wells Fargo has the whole industry figured out for the year. Uh, forget about the uncertainty. They're projecting um, some an, another good year for the chemical industry, to be honest. This was an article that was put out by ISIS uh, summarizing this Wells Fargo analyst on uh, what they're projecting for the industry to look like. And this really was from a Wall Street uh, perspective, how, how the chemical industry is going to fare from a um, earnings perspective and ultimately a share price perspective. But they are, they are fairly robust. The, the, the pricing um, movements that we saw towards the end of last year are going to you know, catch up to inflation this year. Their steam demand be continuing to be robust. Uh, especially the the housing market or construction, and you know, fingers crossed, there is a little bit of optimism from these guys that the automotive industry could see some gains towards the latter part of the year. But I think that's still up for discussion and debate. Um, they did cite three companies that they think will outperform in 2022. Uh, the first being Westlake Chemical, since they're so heavily uh, so heavily invested in the the construction market, um, housing and such, and then Dupont as another company, uh, given some of their acquisitions and shifting to their portfolio, they're in a really good spot to perform well. And the same for Celanese, given their recent acquisition of the Santa Prime business. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed. You know, um, it's for us the biggest question mark. You know, last year clearly was a record breaking year for many companies in the industry. And the question mark is the demand. Can the demand continue to stay high? I think prices can continue to be elevated. Uh, but, you know, as you know, the Fed is making some changes in the rates. And will that dampen demand a little bit? We'll see. Yeah, no doubt. And automotive is the big question mark. And uh, this next story, Rick, which I'll have you go through, it's uh, maybe a, a bit different than the Wells Fargo predictions. Yeah, I mean, this is no secret. I, I mean, it was almost in every meeting, business meeting that I had was talking about uh, automotive. And in 2021, it was a struggle. Uh, and the main, main source of that trouble was the uh, chips uh, and the chip shortage. And, you know, there was... Recently, a, um, a view that was put out by S&P Global Platts Analytics on the whole industry, and it it viewed uh, actually is pretty uh, dark prediction around what's going to happen there. That there wasn't a lot of light at the end of the tunnel until maybe early 2023, uh, because that, um, these chips uh, and the expansion. So there's plan plans in place to expand production within the. Uh, for these microchips, but the problem is there's such a large expenditure and it takes years, multiple years to get a plant up and running. So if you push start now, two years from now is when you finally get something going off the production line. Yeah, no doubt. Doesn't happen overnight. All right, moving on to oil, oil and gas. Uh, crude oil prices continue to, to climb. Uh, I think I saw this morning they were over $80 a barrel. I think it was at $81 or $82 a barrel. Uh, you know, a lot of people were a bit skittish towards the end of last year on this new, you know, COVID variant and how it's going to really slow down the economy. But it hasn't done that. The demand for oil is still there. Uh, the world economy is still ticking. It's not slowing down. People aren't stopping. Uh, OPEC and, and and that'll include you know Russia and and partners are committed to their their hike in production. So hopefully that should see some relief from oil prices. But yeah, uh, they they did come down a little bit, but they've rebounded right back. Yeah, it seems like they're pretty remaining pretty stable up there in the close to the 80s. All right, on a 
on a similar vein or similar story, the rig count. Um, so drilling rigs, it actually rose. Um, we're now at 588, um, which is uh, remains a steady increase from where we were. Uh, in 2021, we added 235, but I think you got to remember with some context, that's we had almost 1,100 at the end of 2018. So we're still about half of where we were in 2018. Yeah, 1100 at the end of eight or at the end of 18 and then 790 was just before the pandemic hit. So we're not quite back there. Uh, we're close. Um, but yeah, it's uh, hopefully that'll that'll lead to better, better prices with when it comes to oil. All right. And another story which we've re been reporting on repeatedly lately. Uh, but it's just not getting any better, and that's container freight rates um, across, specifically across the Pacific. Uh, you know, 80 foot containers are running still at 20,000 bucks, if not more. Um, it's getting it's getting worse. It did get better there for a bit, but it is getting worse. And uh, the story that was reporting the the increased pricing for containers is going to continue to get worse until after. Lunar New Year, which is February 1st. Yeah, we seem like a broken record with this story. I mean, it's been ongoing. I think the, the latest thing is the empty containers didn't get shipped out from Asia like they were supposed to. And so you've got this broader container shortage, even if you've got the ships. Yep. All right, so let's talk about a uh, change here. So what used to be called DuPont uh, Clean Technologies um, has spun off and created a new company called Ellicent Clean Technologies. Um, there's a group of, um, of private equity uh, consisting of Broad Peak Global, um, Green, uh, Asia Green Fund, and the Saudi Arabian Industrial Investments Company. They have all come together to purchase that asset from DuPont. And the whole focus of that company is to um, uh, they have exclusive rights to technologies around um, green green technologies and chemical processing for carbon neutral type activities. Yeah, this story got released last year and it's just finally been finalized and now we have a new company. So welcome to the industry, Ellicent. And in another story that w was broke uh, last year that finally uh, concluded, um, this is in our mergers and acquisition news, is uh, Hoibach and SK Capital's acquisition of clearance colorants business. Uh, we announced this last year and it, it finally finalized just last week. So um, Hoibach and SK Capital continue to, to do more in our industry. Cool. And then uh, in our last story, uh, again on the mergers and acquisitions, uh, Thermo Fisher Scientific has um, actually acquired a company called Peprotech, um, a company that was uh, known for creating recombinant proteins. Um, that uh, deal was, was very quick and then closed um, recently. It was announced on December 30th for the close and uh, the purchase price was approximately $1.85 billion for the acquisition. Yeah, we saw a record number of acquisitions as far as the number of deals last year. We'll see if it continues into 2022. All right, that's it for this week's edition of Industry Reactions. We will return next week with a fresh batch. Until then, stay safe. Take care.